the extraordinary Mark Twain, according to Susie. Written by Barbara Curley. According to Susie, people were, well, just plain wrong about her papa. They thought they knew Mark Twain. After all, he was a world-famous author, quoted here, there, and everywhere. Thousands of people had read his books and attended his lectures. People probably thought they were Mark Twain experts. But they were wrong, and Susie was annoyed greatly. It troubles me to have so few people know Papa. I mean, really know him, Susie said. They think of Mark Twain as a humorist, joking at everything. Mark Twain was a humorist. Some folks called him the funniest man in America. But he was more, so much more. I never saw a man with so much variety of feeling as Papa has, Susie said, and she was determined to set the record straight. Susie was 13. Papa called her the busiest bee in the household hive, but he didn't realize just how busy. Susie was secretly writing her own biography of Mark Twain. To write a good biography, Susie knew she must capture her subject's personality, his character quirks, and the little things that made Papa, well, Papa. She studied him by day and wrote about him at night. Then she hid the biography under her pillow. Susie observed Papa carefully, how he stopped whatever he was doing just to confer with a cat, how he paced the floor between courses at dinner, waving his napkin to punctuate a particular point, and how he let the housekeeper know when his shirts were missing buttons. Susie noted Papa's habits. She described his fine qualities. She even described his not-so-fine qualities. Into the biography and under the pillow, it all went. One day, Mama found the biography and showed it to Papa. He examined the book with deep pleasure, delighting in Susie's frequently desperate spelling. He approved of how she didn't cover up one's deficiencies, but gave them all an equal showing with one's handsomer qualities. But most of all, Papa was touched that Susie had started the biography secretly and of her own motion and out of love for him. It was the finest compliment he had ever received. After that, Papa sometimes made pronouncements about himself at the breakfast table just to help his biographer along. And if his biographer needed to fill in the blanks, she just asked. Like any good biographer, Susie chronicled Papa's early years. Susie recorded Papa's very public life and delved into his private life. As a writer herself, Susie paid close attention to Papa's work routine. She'd seen him write from just after breakfast until just before supper, skipping lunch entirely. On a good day, he filled 50 pages. If he had a sudden stroke of inspiration, neither cold 
nor dark, nor three in the morning, kept him from hurrying up to his office to scribble it down. Papa called it sailing right on. All too often, however, Papa got, well, distracted. He was a famous author living in the most impressive house in Hartford, Connecticut. Friends, neighbors, and total strangers were eager to spend time with him. Papa tried to let George, the butler, know when he wasn't interested in receiving visitors. But sometimes Papa had to suffer when, as he put it, some mentally dead people brought their corpses with them for a long visit. And then there were the stacks of irksome letters to answer. Far too much of Papa's time was used up by being famous. And so, Papa liked to escape to Quarry Farm in New York, where Mama's sister lived. He called it the quietest of all quiet places, far away from peering eyes and pesky visitors. The animals on the farm could not care less that Papa was a world-famous author, especially the donkey, Kidichin, who only gave rides in exchange for treats. Life on the farm was so busy, there was barely time to write. But despite their busy schedules, Papa and Susie did find time to write. Susie carefully copied samples of Papa's work into the biography, essays he wrote about Civil War hero Ulysses S. Grant, and a little poem he composed in honor of the donkey, Kidichin. Oh, you dear Kidichin, you are totally bewitching. Wahi! Our summer days, Kidichin, thou dear from nose to britchin. Wahi! Anon, lift up thy song, thy noble note prolong. Wahi! 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 Sweetest donkey man ever saw. Papa wrote in a special octagonal study Aunt Susie had built for him. On hot summer days, he opened all the windows and then anchored his papers with bat bricks so they wouldn't fly away. There, he worked on books such as Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, which Papa called a rattling good novel about a runaway boy who helps a slave escape down the Mississippi River. He wrote all day and read the pages to the family at night. Susie recounted how Papa then relied on Mama's good taste to clean up any questionable passages. Susie herself had definite opinions about Papa's work. She loved The Prince and the Pauper for its lovely, charming ideas and beautiful language. Susie saw Papa's kind, sympathetic nature as they promenaded up and down the library every evening discussing, as Papa put it, affairs of state or the deep questions of human life or our small personal affairs. The months passed as Susie detailed her observations of Papa to present to present a well-rounded picture. She wrote of things serious, since Papa was sometimes serious, such as his efforts to establish an international copyright law and his painstaking work publishing Grant's memoirs. And she wrote of silly things, since Papa was sometimes silly. Like Papa, Susie wrote and wrote, 
filling over 130 pages. To conclude her biography, she relied on an eyewitness account to provide an anecdote that summed up Papa perfectly. Papa approved wholeheartedly. Susie had been a kindly biographer, to be sure. Yet, to a quite credible degree, he decided, she was also loyal to the responsibilities of her position as historian and gave him a quiet prod now and then. Her observations were so clear and nicely shaded that 20 years later, when he published his autobiography, he included his favorite passages from Susie's notebook. And so, people finally got just what Susie thought they needed, a portrait of the funny, serious, absent-minded, cat-loving, billiard-playing, philosophical papa, the extraordinary Mark Twain, according to Susie. The end. <laughs>